welcome to the Personal Kelly Talk Show for May of 2022. Uh, Personal Kelly offers workforce advisor and HR solutions across 13 markets in the APAC region. I'm Chris Sotomayor, a consultant with Personal Kelly Consulting, and I'll be your host today. Today, we're going to discuss a prevalent topic in the post-pandemic era, and that's leadership in the future of work. And the reasons we're talking about this topic is because as Asia Pacific recovers from COVID, employee expectations have changed regarding when, how, and why they work. Salaries are important, but they're not the only important thing. And people are looking at their life purpose, reevaluating it. And all these factors have become key triggers for switching jobs. So we hope that talent and HR leaders will find something helpful from today's session. And please comment down below if you want to add anything to this conversation. So joining me today is my colleague from Personal Kelly Consulting, Alvin Lung. He's Regional Head of Learning at Personal Kelly Consulting APAC. He brings useful insights from his engagement with APAC leaders and is very passionate about this topic through many of his training and coaching programs. So in the next few minutes, we're really going to be discussing the challenges for APAC leaders and we're also going to be discussing some engagement strategies that leaders can use to be better leaders in the future of work. So uh, based on my engagement with leaders and the observations, it all boils down into two main steps. So uh, step one, internal marketing. So company need to focus on internal advocates. So we need to foster a positive company culture to improve the uh, employee experience. After employee go through an extraordinary experience, career growth, and their life fulfillment, they all become our testimony. And they speak for us to becoming a very attractive element for the external candidates. And step two, company needs to streamline and improve the recruitment cycle. As part of the employee and candidate experience, the hiring cycle is a momentum game. We all want the candidate to be excited about coming on board shortly, or else we just can't keep their interest for long. Those are wonderful points, Alvin, and I concur. I think we really need to think about integrating talent. Um, once we do hire those talent and bring them on board, um, we want to do everything we can to give them a great experience so that they can do their best um, and, and you know integrate into their new home, their new organization. So. Another challenge that we hear a lot from APAC talent leaders is about retaining the talent that they have. So they go out of their way to hire and find great people, um, but you know it's not so easy to hold on to them, especially in this current talent war. Um, you know, as many companies are experiencing, there's a huge competitive demand for talent, especially with certain skills, and so we see a lot of resignations. Um, you know, as, as employees are looking at the new opportunities available to them and sometimes making a move. Um, some of the concerns that employers have are, you know, a balance of rewards and benefits, um, you know, providing upskilling for employees, and then, you know, providing career development, because we know that one of the main reasons why employees often leave is they feel a lack of career development. Um, and then on top of that, we've got to think about, you know, leader IQ. Sometimes leaders themselves um, are not strong in self-awareness and they're actually the ones that are driving great talent away. So, you know, leaders that are more aware of their own blind spots and their own, um, you know, are able to be more empathetic to their staff probably do a greater job of holding on to the precious talent that they need. Um, Alvin, what, what do you think about talent retention challenges? Right, indeed, Chris, I agree with you. So self-awareness is vital in leadership, while assumption and being judgmental are incredibly harmful, but they are all subtle and unconscious. So companies need to build ample feedback loop for leaders. We hire people for their performance, to let them be willing to challenge the standard of excellency, to help uh, to, to, have, to allow them for the, um, the autonomy and unleash the skill, ability and experience. Psychological safety become a crucial team norm, allowing people to speak up, defend who they love, what they love, and boost innovation, which is the fundamental desire for everyone. This is a key to talent uh, uh, retention. I concur, Alan. I think that's uh, those are all great suggestions. You know, a third challenge that we're hearing is, um, you know, developing talent. So once you know companies have hired great people. 
um, they're not able to develop them in the way that they need to. And I think, you know, talent is the single most important key to success. Without the right people, with the right skills, no matter how brilliant a business leader strategy might be, um, he or she wouldn't be able to execute without the right people. And in my opinion, leadership development is crucial, especially as I mentioned, when, when leaders are um, lacking self-awareness and their behaviors are driving great talent away, you know, that, that's, a, that's a very important indicator that leaders themselves need to develop. They need to strengthen their own ability to be more empathetic, to meet the needs of their employee and staff, especially in light of these post-pandemic conditions, and they need to change and alter those behaviors that might be driving some of their greatest talent away. Um, and you can't really develop somebody else if you haven't improved and developed yourself first. So that self-awareness really is key. What's your take on this, Alvin? Yes, Chris, I uh, deeply agree that leadership development is crucial to avoid driving people away and ensure empathy. Design on-the-job training, OJT, is continuously the primary talent development strategy. But what we mean by OJT nowadays is with a broader perspective. The talent's original role is not a boundary, and any job within the organization is accessible. This is the talent marketplace. Here's a ping pong. The staff feel that he cannot further develop uh, continuously writing on the current role, so he resigned. While senior leaders look at the resignation and realize it because of the perceived job constraint, then immediately say, we have to design a job in another department. Why this staff didn't speak up? And then in the exit interview, it's found that the staff actually raised a hand and seek for the job from another department, but he is being told, sorry, we don't have such policy to let you be in team A, but doing jobs from team B. Not to blame anyone, but a talent marketplace mechanism is need to be established. Then the genuine OJT with meaningful and desired work experience for talent development can be accomplished. That's a wonderful insight. Um, and I agree with you. I think companies need to do a better job of creating opportunities to not lose that precious talent that they have. So it seems like based upon the three challenges we've been talking about, the challenge of attracting the right talent, retaining that talent, and developing that talent, it seems like engagement is the key to um, current and future workplace success. Um, our workforce has been clearly in, uh, impacted by the pandemic, um, and, and maybe they require an updated treatment. Leaders need to adopt a new mindset that's going to address this new world of work. So Purcell Kelly focuses on, on four aspects of engagement, you know, flexibility, communication and connectivity, work-life integration, and then making good judgment calls. I'd love to hear your perspective on, on how leaders could better engage their employees, Alan. Indeed, Chris. Allow me to further illustrate a little bit about that four point. Number one, flexibility. It is not about a physical count of work output, but the value of work. Number two, Communication and connectivity, when to use the face call, phone, email, text. We need to design with, uh, with a self-awareness. Number three, work-life integrations and balance. Bosses or even colleagues must understand that people have personal lives too. So there are different, um, different changing parts in people's life, both at work and at their home. And finally, number four, managing the good judgment call. Doing well is short term, while doing good is long term. So we must address the increasing awareness of sustainability of people. Right on, Alvin. I couldn't agree more. So we've come to the end of our talk show. Thank you, Alvin, so much for joining me to discuss the future of leadership. Your comments have been so insightful. And all of you watching out there, I hope you found our discussion helpful. We're happy to hear from you on how we might be able to collaborate or assist you. Thank you, Chris. And thank you all out there. Stay safe, stay true, and stay trending.